everyone, I'm Jeevna Hegde, a customer engineer at Google Cloud. And welcome back to the Technical Guide for Startups, where we are creating a series of videos for technical enablement to start, build and grow your businesses successfully and sustainably on Google Cloud. In our previous video, we deep dive into streamlining your application deployment. And now we're on to the fourth stop, which is all about deploying your microservices application on Google Kubernetes engine. In this video, we are going to go over understanding microservices and Kubernetes at a high level and introduce you to Google Kubernetes Engine or GKE and understand few of its important features. We will also be looking at a sample e-commerce application architecture and see how it would be deployed in the demonstration section. We will finally end it with a customer success story of an actual Google Cloud customer and wrap up with some actionable next steps. So without any further ado, let's get right on to exploring the Google Cloud Platform together. Imagine you and your teammate have built out a fairly large complex application. Now let's say you're done making some changes to your part of the application and your teammate is still working on an entirely different part of the same application. Wouldn't it be convenient if you could just test out your changes or even deploy it to the main application while your teammate continues working on his part? This sort of a parallel approach can be taken if you build out your architecture with microservices as opposed to monoliths. A monolithic application is a single unified unit, whereas microservices architecture breaks it down into a collection of smaller independent units. Containerization is a method of visualization which separates the applications and services at the operating level. And microservices uses containerization to deliver smaller, single function modules that work in tandem to create more agile and scalable applications. And Kubernetes is excellent for containerization. Moving on to Kubernetes. Kubernetes can be summed up by two things. One, it's an abstraction over infrastructure. What I mean by this is that when you install Kubernetes, it handles the compute, networking and storage for your user workloads. So you don't have to worry too much about the underlying environment and you'll be able to focus on your application. And secondly, Kubernetes uses a declarative format to orchestrate its containers. What we mean by that is that you tell us what you want and not necessarily how to create it. Kubernetes runs a control loop to ensure that the current state always matches the desired state, as mentioned in your configuration files. If it doesn't, Kubernetes is smart enough to know what steps to take to keep them in alignment. It might all seem a little complex. In fact, it is. But that's where Google Kubernetes Engine or GKE comes in. GKE is a managed service for running Kubernetes. GKE essentially gives you an abstraction by providing you with freedom with some configurations and also manages a lot of features for your containerized applications. So when we say manage, what we mean by that is that it manages your auto repair, auto upgrade, auto-scaling, auto-provisioning, and regional or high availability control plane. It is also your amazing site reliability engineering team. We have two modes in GKE, standard and autopilot. Standard mode is where you configure the cluster's underlying infrastructure, giving you the node configuration flexibility. And autopilot mode is a step ahead, where GKE provisions and manages your cluster's underlying infrastructure including nodes and node pools, giving you an optimized cluster with hands-off experience. Now let's quickly jump on to a demonstration of configuring different aspects of a GK cluster in both standard and autopilot mode. We start off by going to the Google Cloud Console. This is the dashboard. We then move to the navigation menu and go to the Kubernetes engine. I suggest if you're not familiar with the Google Cloud Console, please watch the Getting Started on Google Cloud video that we have for you in the description box below, just to get a quick run through of the Google Cloud Console. And then you can come back and continue this video. Here, we already have a few of them pinned, and we're going to go scroll down and go to the Kubernetes engine. Once you click on Kubernetes engine, this opens up. You can then create a cluster by clicking on Create here or here. Like we discussed, we have Standard and Autopilot. Let's start off with Standard. Once you click on Configure, if this is your first time creating a cluster, you are given a quick tour of what all tabs to click on and a brief overview of what's in it. I'm going to leave the cluster name as it is, and then I can choose whether I want a zonal or regional cluster. 
I can also specify if I want to give the default node locations. I can then choose my control plane version, whether I want it to be static or release channel. In release channel, every time a new version is released, the clusters are automatically upgraded, unlike in static. When I leave it at release channel and go here to default pool, you can see that the auto upgrade and auto release are blurred out. This is because this is automatically taken care of in release channel. Now instead, if I go back and select static version and come back to default pool, you can see that you can choose whether you want to auto upgrade or auto repair or not. Well, let me leave it at release channel as it's a best practice and come back to default pool. Now I'm going to leave my node pool name to default pool as it is. Leave the number of nodes as well to three. Change the minimum number of nodes per zone to be one and maximum to be three. And just quickly look at the other configurations and leave them as it is. I can either create my node pool directly here or go to nodes and change the configurations of the nodes that I want in my node pool. I can choose from the different families here and change my machine type. And maybe I want my machine type to have, let's say, two vCPUs and eight GB RAM. And maybe I also want my disk to have better performance. So I'm going to change my boot disk to make it SSD. I'm going to quickly look at the security tab here, leave them all to as it is. Look at metadata in case maybe I wanted to add some Kubernetes label. In cluster, I'm going to go to the automation tab and enable vertical pod auto scaling. I could enable auto provisioning here as well, but I'm going to not do that now. Move to the next tab. Then here in networking, it's picked default, which is my default network. You'll learn more about VPC creation in the upcoming videos, so stay tuned. I can choose whether I want my cluster to be public or private. Then you can see that HTTP load balancing has been enabled here. This is for external load balancing. You learn again more about this in the upcoming networking video. In the security section here, I'm going to let's say disable my shielded GKE nodes. Then in metadata, here it's the cluster metadata as opposed to what we saw previously. Then in the features section, you can see a bunch of other features which you can enable, such as cloud logging, cloud monitoring, Anthos service mesh, and so much more. And finally, I'm clicking on create. For an actual application, you don't have to run through all of these different tabs as the default values are already chosen for you. Of course, you can configure them yourself as well. And there you go, we have a cluster which is created. For configuring an autopilot cluster, it's much more straightforward. As you can see in the tour here, it only gives you one thing that it talks about. As you can see, a few of those features that we saw earlier from the standard are already taken care of in the autopilot mode. Again, I'm going to leave the cluster name as is. And the only option here is for your cluster to be regional. This ensures high availability at all times. You can choose a region, of course. And additionally, you have some networking and advanced options. You can choose whether you want your cluster to be public or private. Let me just drop down the networking options here. I can choose my network here, whether I want it to be the default one or a network which I've created. I can also choose my node subnet. There's also a possibility for putting in different address ranges. If not, the defaults are taken. Now I'm not going to change anything here and hide my networking options and go to advanced options. This gives me a bunch of different options for the tabs which we had seen earlier in the standard section. I'm going to leave them all as it is and click on create. And there you go, your autopilot cluster has been created. Did you see how much of a difference there is simply between standard mode and autopilot mode? Now imagine you didn't have GKE and you have to do all this yourself only using Kubernetes. Wouldn't it be so much more harder? Moving on to my favorite section of this entire video. Whether your application is a bow wow doggy dog boutique or ouch, first aid please healthcare application, you can deploy your microservices application on GKE. For the purpose of this demo, we'll be sampling an e-commerce application with a simple and straightforward name. Let's call it Online Boutique. This sample application has gotten 11 microservices. Let's quickly look at the architecture so we get a clear picture of what our application looks like. 
As you can see, it's got a payment service, an email service, the front end service, a separate product catalog service, and so on. My point being, the application is broken down and makes the maintenance, debugging, scalability so much more easier. In this application, the users access the website through the internet and they reach the front end service. They can then browse the items in the product catalog, add them to their cart, and then purchase them. In the back end, the application accesses a database. Additionally, a recommendation service helps recommend similar products and so on. This is the basic workflow in terms of the architecture. Now let's move on to the demonstration. As part of this demonstration, let's look at three steps. First, let's begin by exploring the code briefly from the GitHub repository. Second, let's deploy the application on GKE via the command line interface. This on Google Cloud is the Cloud Shell. And finally, let's test out the application once we deploy it. Now quickly jumping onto the first part. I'm going to the GitHub repository of the online boutique store. We can go to the source file, have a look at the different microservice files available here. Then let's say I go to the cart service. Go to the source file here and then click on services. We see the C sharp files here. Let me go ahead and open one of these. The cart service C sharp file. You can see the code here. Similarly, you can go back and look at these C sharp files to find the code respectively in the microservices. We also have a few Node.js, Python, and Java files. This very simple and short run through was essential so we get an idea to understand how the code has been broken down. Now that we have this in place, let's go ahead and deploy this application on GKE. You can deploy the application through the Google Cloud Console, like how we created a cluster earlier, or we can use the command line interface. Here, let's go over the latter. To do so, simply activate Cloud Shell and get started. Start off by assigning your project ID to the variable project ID. Now, for this particular project or project ID, I'm enabling a few APIs. Now let's go ahead and clone our GitHub repository. Fun fact, you have something very similar to your GitHub repository on Google Cloud itself. This is called the Cloud Source Repositories. You can store your code here just as you do on GitHub, so everything stays on the platform. Now, let's go ahead and create our cluster. As we already discussed, we can do this either in the standard mode or autopilot mode. Here, let me go ahead and use the autopilot mode. Once we've created it, we then deploy our sample cluster. Now, let's ensure that all our pods are ready. Once they all show that they're running, we can pick the external IP address so we can access the website and try buying an item through the application. Now, let's enter the external IP address and test it out. Yay! We have our website now. Now we can scroll through and browse through items. Let's add this watch to the cart and see some product recommendations which I might like. Okay, great. Let's also add this top now. And as we can see, this e-commerce application works perfectly. And that brings us to the end of this demo. Now, let's look at a real-world Google Cloud customer who benefited from the Google Kubernetes engine. Maidu is a popular photo editing application, which is a leading image processing and social media platform in China, driven by artificial intelligence. GKE helped Maidu to simplify the workflow and reduce the operational cost by 44%. GKE's auto-scaling features allowed them to use small machines with a high bandwidth. GKE gave the customers a very high rendering speed of just a few seconds which improved the customer experience and made customers come back to them. Additionally, Mitel uses Anthos to deploy and manage containers all over the world, BigQuery to analyze user behavior and get more accurate user insights, and Firebase, which helps them reduce their split testing time to 50% so that engineers can roll out new features faster and gain bigger market share. The senior vice president of My2 talks about some of the numbers here, which I mentioned earlier. They were also able to automate their infrastructure management and be much more productive. Hopefully, that gave you a bit of a nudge. So when are you getting started on the Google Cloud platform?
If this video interested you to learn more about containerization, GKE, autopilot versus standard and when to use which, don't forget to check the suggestions we have for you in the description box below. And that brings us to the end of the fourth stop, which is the GKE video. In the next video, you will learn more about the compute engine and you'll be learning how to configure compute engine instances. You will also be doing a sample application deployment and end it with a customer success story, just like we did in this video. So stay tuned if you're looking into deploying your applications on virtual machine instances. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon to stay up to date and receive notifications every time we post a new video. Bye for now and we will see you very soon in our next video.